here with another tier list. This is going to be uh, our updated tier list for the new patches, including uh, the newest patch, which improved characters like Kali, uh, made Heartseeker the item a little bit better, reduced the cost of Stone Cutting Sword, uh, which has affected uh, some of uh, the characters. Uh, it helped Kali quite a bit. She kind of got a double buff, buff to herself, plus a buff to some of her items. So stuff like that. And we're going to get right into it, guys. Agni, who I think for the first time ever in our last tier list, was taken off of A, um, basically for the first time ever, is right back into A. Uh, he got a little itty bitty tiny buff that was actually a pretty big difference for him. You can use the 2-1 combo basically every time now. Uh, it used to be very ping related. If you had like 50 ping or below, you could do it. If you didn't, you couldn't. Uh, so they fixed that issue. So now everybody can do that combo. And that's a pretty big deal for him. Uh, so that's why he's back into A tier. AMC as well has received quite a few. Quite a few buffs. Uh, he's actually probably been one of the historically worst characters for quite a long time now. Uh, I mean, everybody's loved AMC, but really competitively he hasn't been there. But his latest buff has given his hives way bigger radius. Okay, way, way bigger radius. Plus, uh, now his hives act as wards. And his huddy is a little bit more effective. All of these things were good for him. Still, of course, same problems. Very susceptible to ganks. But now he kind of has bonus wards. Uh, and he can put out his hive locations in better spots for him. Honestly, this is the first time I've ever put AMC not in the B tier for the joke. But I think AMC is actually A tier right now. He's definitely viable with the changes. Uh, they've been quite strong for him. And you're going to see him around a lot right now. You still can't pick him into every comp. Thor will poo-poo on you. Don't pick him into Thor. You're just going to get ulti on the wall off and you die. But there's definitely situations where you can abuse the new AMC. Ah, Posh. Ah, Posh got actually some pretty nice uh, buffs as well. So pretty nice buffs as well. The problem is, is he still sucks in Conquest. Um... He definitely needed the changes. I mean, he but he just still sucks. He got a little more movement speed. I believe it was mana cost reductions, um, stuff like that. But nothing really to help his oomph. His ultimate now will always cast. It's on a 0, 0.0 induction time before it was like 0. 0.4. Uh, but on the whole, Al Pwash not not coming through to help you. Uh, he's not going to be one of your top mid laners. We're going to have him down here. In this B tier for now. Of course, guys, uh, as we go through this tier list, there's chances that gods go up or down a tier uh, once we get more people on the list. Of course, once you have close to, you know, halfway through and as you start getting part farther past that, you can start to be like, okay, well, this character's got a bit of an edge on this character. And so some characters you may see by the end of the tier list one spot away from where they were originally placed just because you get to see the actual board itself. Hard to think about, you know, 70 gods all one time. Amatudasu. Very, very strong. Uh, also known as Cope's Only God. Uh, very effective. Please don't ban it against us. I would love it if you didn't do that. But she's a very strong solo laner. That's basically the only role you want to play her in. We've seen people try to play her uh, in support. Uh, not very successfully. You want to keep her over to the solo lane. And she's definitely uh, one of your top tier solo laners. Probably around this S A plus tier. For now, going into A plus. But she's definitely one of the uh, one of your premier solo laners that you're going to see every single game. On her. On her's good. On her's fine. He's a safe pick. He's very aggressive early. He drops off towards the later portion of the game. Uh... Would you pick him before AMC? Yeah, of course he would. Um, he's an overall 
just safer hunter. He's got the jump. He's got the CC mainly on its ult. He's got decent crowd control. He has a knockup, a stun, and a slow. Overall, strong ADC. Not the best ADC. He's not Rama or Jingwei, uh, but he definitely is good for being aggressive. Anubis. Anubis still sucks. Anubis still sucks. He has not gotten better in a long time. Um, fun to play. Does a ton of damage. There's just no way to play him at a competitive level still. Um, only competitive player that ever really did it uh, was Knight in China. And I have heard that he has since retired. And Knight will not be playing at Worlds this year. Um, so, rip your Goobuses. Everybody, rip your Goobuses. It was nice knowing him. But no night this year. No night. Ao Kuang. So Ao Kuang is still your 100% basically pick ban rate in casuals and ranked Q. Um, competitively, he's not nearly as strong as he is in ranked. Of course, I make these tier list guys strictly based off of competitive play um top tier ranked can factor in but i try to base it mostly off of things like scrims and spl games while quang does well he's not the jungler getting picked up every single game uh that's more looking towards things like ratatasker is still very popular thor is still very popular but he is definitely one of the top uh, junglers. I don't think we're going to have anybody in S plus for this tier list. There's nobody that's like breaking the game right now. But Al Quang's definitely up there. He's around this S A plus level. Uh, definitely going to be one of your top priority picks uh, if you're going to go for that style of composition. Of course, it also gives you magic damage in the jungle, which is very strong. Uh, so you can build team comps around that with a physical support. Something or another. Even run a physical in the mid lane. Aphrodite. She's not very good. Um, Aphrodite just has no place in the conquest map right now. Aphrodite and Hell have the same problem. Which is that they're both solo lane mages. But mages are not viable in the solo lane right now. Guardians are viable in the solo lane. Warriors are viable in the solo lane. We've seen freaking assassins played in the solo lane like Ratatasker and Susano. Mages are not viable in the solo lane right now. Uh, they don't work well in the mid lane. They're gods that want to farm until late game, which is why the solo lane worked so well for them earlier seasons. Uh, but not this season. Where's Hell? It'd be easier just to get her on here right now. They're in the exact same situation. Neither of them can be played. ABCs. Hell. Boom. I did it. Look at that. Now she's on the list. Both of them just cannot actually make it into competitive. Are they better than... No. Hell's worse than Afro. Afro's more viable than Hell's because of her ultimate being able to block big ulties. But neither of them right now viable uh, in the meta. Apollo. Apollo's actually fine. Believe it or not, Apollo's actually fine. He hasn't actually been broken for quite a while. Um, he was probably one of the longest lasting broken characters in Smite. Um, was a top pick for seasons. Was a top, uh, basically one of your go-tos. I mean, Zatman and, and Barracuda, I can only imagine, have thousands of games on Apollo. Because of how broken he was. But as of right now, he's fine. His lane clear is pretty okay. Um, he brings okay CC. His global map presence is okay. He's kind of like a bad Jingwei. Right? Jingwei basically does what he does except for her, the Apollo ultimate in her passive. So like, there you go. I mean, what else is there to it? So, our first juicy pick of this tier list, guys. Arachne. So Arachne is very interesting. Now, I might be a little bit biased. I admit, I might be a little bit biased. But hear me out, okay? So Arachne has been coming back into the meta. 
Heartseeker is amazing on her, okay? People are looking at the Arachne and they're realizing how good Heartseeker is. She just got buffed. By she, I mean Heartseeker. Heartseeker just got buffed. Now it's even better on her. Stone Cutting Sword got a price reduction. It's a great item on her. With that price reduction, that's even better on her. Things like Kin work very well. Magi's Blessing, which is more effective, is nice for her as you get to the late game and you don't want to get CC'd. Her build is very streamlined and very strong right now. As far as her kit goes, good early game clear. Uh, transitioned fairly well right now into the mid game and has a fine late game. Arachne is actually A plus right now. While she's not the easiest jungler to play, she definitely has a different style than the other jungles. If you can learn how to get into the Arachne style mindset of kind of you only go in when your ulti's up and you're looking for, you know, you got to make sure you get the triple hit on the single target to get the stun. But she's actually very strong right now. She has good level one potential for things like invading if you need to. She's very good at doing the gold theory because of her spider setup. She's actually quite strong right now. This is the first time in months uh, that Arachne has been quite viable. Uh, she's also a great direct counter to Ao Quang. Ao Quang goes stealth. You can use your uh, spiders to bring him out of stealth. Fairly strong uh, counter. Ares. Ares is fine. Um, I think we've seen both... Area has been played effectively and unaffectively. Thank you, Horseman. I appreciate it. If you're a roar, dude, Ares is so strong. But if you're not a roar, uh, Ares is okay. He's fine right now, though. He definitely has his spot in the meta. He can be played. Um, but you have to be very, very careful. You have to have a team composition around it. You have to have the team synergy around it. Artemis. Artemis is not good. Artemis is not good right now. I mean, like, she's worse than AMC. Not good. Why is she worse than AMC? Well, AMC has lane clear. Artemis doesn't. And that's, like, the main reason. Early game is so important. Getting that lane clear means you get things like mid harpies. Means you invade things like their red buff and their speed buff. Means you can look for the early rotations to gold fury. Artemis doesn't have any of that. Artemis doesn't turn on until... God, level 12 plus at least. But AMC also starts to hit hard around that time. The only thing she has going for her is the fact that Tusky provides CC immunity, uh, which can be very beneficial in the late game. But if Panda Cat can't make Artemis work all season long once he gets back, then she's not good. If Panda cannot make her good, she's not good. Athena! Hey, Athena! I know that character. That character is pretty good. So, Athena is actually uh, one of the stronger characters right now. Not broken or anything, but A plus tier. Uh, the reason why I throw her in A plus tier is she's viable in multiple roles. We've seen her pretty commonly this split be played in both support and the jungle role. She does pretty well on both of those. She can also be played in solo, but we haven't really seen her solo this season. It's mainly in the support and jungle roles. Very strong. Not a very common pickup all the time. Uh, you're not seeing teams rush for the Athena pick. Uh, I imagine her ban rate is actually very, very low. Um, ban's more reserved right now uh, for thing other gods, uh, mid gods, stuff like that. Um, is strong. She's not Terra for support, you know? Uh, and so she's not getting that same sort of pressure on her to be picked or banned. But she does give you that nice little leeway for support jungle. A Wheelix. A Wheelix is fine. Um, we had a very... What was, was it earlier this season when Eager was running the, the knock-up comp with Vulcan, A Wheelix, Sobek, I think? Um, definitely can be effective. Adapting played a Wheelix at LAN very, very effectively, but like he could play with one handed Hebo jungled effectively. So, like, relevancy, I don't know. But 
Definitely can be played. Not something you're going to be early picking. You do want to pick it up after you grab a couple of knockups, whether it be the fact that you did go Vulcan middle, whether it be the fact that you did go Sobek, whatever it may be. Me be. Jing Wei is what I'm trying to say. Even if you have Jing Wei, something like that, knock people up uh, to work with that composition. Hey, a support that's been doing really good this season, Bacchus. Bacchus has been quite strong this season. Quite, quite strong. Uh, not getting picked up quite as much now just because once Terra got thrown into the field, everything got thrown for a loop uh, for support. But uh, very, very common support pick. Shadow Q, definitely loving the Bacchus this season. He probably had like an 80 plus percent Bacchus pick rate. Lots of damage. Bacchus just got a little bit of a buff to where his... Belch now does 50% healing reduction instead of 25%. That's very strong. And I do expect it to be used, uh, Bacchus now as a counter healer pick as well as just a straight damage initiation pick. Hey, Bakasura. Bakasura is super troll in casuals, but he's not actually a good character. Um... Can you do troll stuff with Baka? Sure, you can invade people's buffs and eat their buff and ha 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 ha. But like, in a competitive game, it doesn't work. People have their words out. They see you there. They wait for you to come in. Then they just kill you. Um, his build is okay right now. But like, when you have to pick up the Fatalis, unless you're Freya, it kind of throws off your, your entire build. He's just kind of a have fun character. So Basta! So I probably would have said prior to our land that Bastet was probably, I don't know, maybe B plus around that tier. But I think DJ Pernicus made it pretty clear that backdooring with Bastet is a pretty legit strategy uh, that's very difficult to deal with. Uh, the whole... Kitty's taking the tower and being able to go the full pen build right now very effectively means that your Bastet can just kind of run around and backdoor really hardcore. Pretty annoying. Um, I'm going to throw her into A tier for now just because nobody else is really playing Bastet. Nobody else is really playing Bastet at all. Um, it's pretty strictly DJ. But the way that Eager plays it is very strong. But it's kind of like the Ares thing. Ares hasn't been very effective this season. But like when Aurora plays Ares, it's like, wow, look how effective their Ares is. Same kind of thing with the Bastet. Definitely viable. We've seen it work. Oh, God. Sneeze? Thinking about it. Thinking about it. <coughs> God, I hate sneezing. Bologna! Bologna's fine. There's something strange. Bologna's in the tier right now. Thank you, Doom, for the sub. I appreciate it. Bologna's just fine right now. Um, I think we saw her maybe picked a couple times on land for the solo lane. But for the most part, you're seeing Robins, AMAs, Wukongs, uh, even Osiris getting picked up. Fair share of Guardians. You're seeing your Sobex over there. Um, but Bologna is not the most popular pick. She just doesn't bring the same oomph that she did uh, previous to nerfs, and she hasn't basically since then. Kabrakin. Kabrakin had a very tiny period, a very tiny period this season where he was super strong. Just, he got like a little bit above to his abilities and his build aligned with the way the meta was going, and all of a sudden it was like, give me Kabrakin every game. That is no longer uh, the time. He doesn't see basically any competitive pr play whatsoever. Uh, down in the B plus tier. Everything that he does, basically other gods uh, do better right now. He had that time, that very short time, where he was very, very strong. But nobody's playing Kabrakin anymore at all. It's not even like a thought on people's brains. Chuck! Chalk recently got some, like, buff nerfs, kind of. Um, depending on how you look at it, a buff nerf. On the whole, it's helped out Chalk a little bit. 
you can definitely get away with chalk in the solo lane. Um, I mean, we see Zalia do it all the time, whether chalk is relevant or not. But, of course, the problem with chalk, he drops off in the late game. Always has. But he's definitely viable. It'll get you through the lane. You'll come into team fights. You'll do chalk stuff. The only thing is that everybody knows exactly what you're going to provide. You're just going to do a knockup and you're going to slow a little bit. And if that's enough, then cool. If it's not enough, well, you can't really do anything more. You're just a chalk. Changa! Changa! Changa sucks. Sorry, Changa. You're one of my favorite gods, but Changa's not good. Um, as always, Changa has no home. She's a healer mage that wants to be played in the solo lane. Mages can be played in the solo lane. They don't have enough early clear. They don't have enough presence. They can't deal with the invades. Can't play Changa. Same reason why you can't play Aphrodite in Hell. Same reason. Hell's just a more extreme version of those two. Chiron! Chiron's fine. Uh, Chiron saw a bit of popularity earlier this year. Right now, he's not getting played very much at all. We saw him a couple times come out in ADC and mid. The one thing Chiron has going for him is that he's both um, able to play ADC and mid. Because of that, He's an A tier. He will work in both. It does give you, if you pick him, you can go, ah, eh, we don't really know where he's going to go. Kronos. So Kronos is an interesting pick right now. Uh, not very popular. He does get picked. Uh, Zatman likes to play the magical ADCs. I think we saw him play a lot of Freya. Um, Saul when he can, stuff like that. Um, but Kronos right now, probably... One of the weaker mage hunters, if not the weakest, both Soul and Freya seem to be quite a bit more popular than him. He's still fine, uh, but he is limited to playing in that ADC role. You won't, you, you won't see him in the mid lane or the solo lane. Cupid! So, Cupid's in B+. So everybody thought, including me, I mean, I'm guilty as well. That Cupid was going to be OP. Okay, so Cupid was going to get these buffs. And it was going to be like, oh my god, Cupid, give me your heart bomb right in my butt. But it was like, afterwards, by the time he got off of PTS, some of his buffs have been nerfed. And one of his buffs, buffs ended up being a chalk situation where it was a buff nerf. It was actually a nerf that was declared a buff and so cupid actually got worse um you can see the heart bomb now the duration around you his ultimate it no longer stuns it's just a meds so things like that actually ended up hurting cupid more than helping him hey talk about a god erlang shen well, he is a guy so Erlang Shen is quite strong right now. Um, we've seen him most commonly this season in the solo lane and then the jungle. But also he has come out in the support role being detrimental uh, to teams for Eager. Uh, Eager's success with it was insane. Using the combo on his two uh, to just annihilate the mid lane. But he is a very safe pick because, because of the fact that you can run him in three lanes. He does have some counters, um, you know, that can beat him. But he's just such a strong pick in so many roles. There's no way, reason not to put him up in S tier. Very strong god. It's not like he's game breaking. You know, really nobody's game breaking right now. We don't have any. I mean, at least Bologna was probably up here, but we don't have anything right now that's really breaking it. Uh, you know, maybe Susano was up here a couple patches ago, but not anymore. Fafnir. Fafnir's strong. Fafnir's strong, but he's not the strongest support. He's getting picked about as much as these Bacchus and Athenas. Um, provides good damage for his team. Uh, he actually does a fair bit of damage himself, plus he provides his teammates with that bonus. Has a disarm, has a stun, good zoning ultimate. The ultimate doesn't really do damage because you don't really get hit by it, but you get a zoning technique. But he's getting picked about the same as this Athena Bacchus 
um, style tier. He was at one point getting banned a lot, not really getting banned anymore. Um, bans have shifted a little bit away uh, from Fafnir, so we, he's he's seeing quite a bit, quite a bit more play uh, because of that. Fenrir, Fenrir's fine. Um, we've seen Fenrir's come out and be successful, and Fenrir's come out and be bad, and that's basically what A tier is about. You can play them, but you can also suck at them, right? That's kind of the whole the whole point of Fenrir. Um, you all buy beads, Fenrir loses a lot of his potency. But Fenrir made you all buy beads, so now you don't have something else. So give or take, wins or losses, got to get your strategies to it. Freya. So Freya is a strange god right now. Freya's a strange god right now. She has been picked a lot um, by certain hunters, namely Zatman. We saw play a lot of land. Um, but she wasn't always that successful. The very first game they brought out Freya, it was very, very successful. Uh... But we saw a lot of pretty mediocre Freya play, generically, uh, as of recently. In fact, much better than Freya has been Sol. Sol has been way more effective recently than Freya. Not to mention, you can also have Sol in the mid lane, which opens up a lot of things for you. Uh, Freya is right about this A-plus tier. Strong, viable but doesn't bring the same amount of oomph that Sol has been bringing. Um, many people in many roles with this Sol, uh, many people have found success with both the mid lane and ADC Souls, uh, which does give her a bit of an advantage over the Freya. In fact, we'll throw Sol out now since we're kind of comparing them. Sol is S. Sol is basically a better version of Freya for the most part. Um, not strictly, uh, you know, they're a little bit different, but they both fulfill the magical hunter role. Um, they both bring huge burst damage. Freya has more single target damage, but one soul two on a gold fairy while the other team's doing it, and you hit three people, and you're going to do more damage than Freya does during that fight period. It's just the way that it works. Just the nature of the characters. And because team fighting is where everything is right now, it's all about the soul. Moving forward... Geb. Gabarino. Poor Geb is not good, dude. He's not good. I mean, like, B plus tier, like, not good. Um, he has to get Blink as an active, right, in order to initiate. Nobody wants to get Blink on support because Shell is so strong. And other actives, you want to get, like, either a Weakening Curse or a Sprint or Meditation. So many things. You don't want to get Blink, so that's a waste of an active. His early game sucks. Late game, you become on good, but, like, why not play Terra, who is good early game, has super strong clear, and then is better late game than you because her ultimate's still better than what you do. Um, there's a reason why we haven't seen Gab basically picked up at all in the SPL, and that's just because he has such a hard time getting to a point in his relevancy, uh, which is so late in the game. So late in the game before he becomes relevant. I would love to see get buffs. They even buffed him recently. You know, they had the that stun buff on him. They made his ultimate even better. And just still doesn't help him. Still doesn't help him. I think Geb might be my second most worshiper uh, guardian as well behind Athena. One of my favorite characters. I love him. I love him. Not very good. Not very good. Guan Yu. Guan Yu, on the other hand, he's seen a bit of a, a little bit of a rise this season. A little bit of a rise. Um, his, we're kind of in like a slight healing meta without the healers. So, no Afro Chunga hell. But like, Guan Yu's healing is really nice. Terra healing, even Sylvanas, stuff like that. Um, Guan is viable... His issue will always be that his initiation is pretty meh. Um, 
doesn't bring the same thing as a Bacchus Athena, right? Athena, dash, taunt, poof, you taunt at three people. Bacchus, flop in on two people. Ulti, wow, look at that initiation. Guan Yu's like, look at my horse. My horse is amazing. And everybody's like, I see your horse now. I'm going to back up. And then you're like, shucks, there goes my initiation. So that's kind of his issue is just like this like blatant, I'm coming for you. Please don't run away. Guani in a nutshell. Hades, you suck too. Hades sucks too. Um, he, Hades is a mage that you can't play mid because you just die and you can't contest enough things early enough. You don't do enough damage early. Your ultimate is fairly useless because people just go, hey, I'm rising. I'm just gonna jump out of this. Or hey, I've got my beads up. Or hey, I've got my Aegis up. Or hey, I'm just actually gonna attack you and kill you. Um, he's not good. He's not good. Not, not, not good. Speaking of not good, a character that's probably absolutely broken in casual queue, but you certainly can not play in ranked, Hebo! Um, Hebo's got so many counters, dude. So many things that just kill Hebo. Um, for one, Fenrir! If you pick Hebo and they pick Fenrir, you just lost the game because Fenrir brutalizes you and it will one-shot you for the first 20 minutes. So... I mean, what are you going to do? There's, I mean, one of those guys that, sure, if you make it to late game, grats, your Hebo late game, now you're one-shotting people, you land a big money, oh, awesome. But the point being, in a competitive game, they're not going to let you free farm on Hebo until late game. They're going to take every mid happy from you, they're going to invade every single one of your speed buffs, and you're going to be six levels behind. Just the way that it is. Just the way that it is. Let's move you down there. Move a little bit of these around. Baka, you suck. Racket, you suck. You guys all suck. All right, there we go. A little better. Hercules. I think we've seen Hercules just a couple of times, and his showings have been lackluster. Lackluster, I tell you. Um, while he has a lot of base damage on him, like, Hercules can do good damage. He's not bringing the same amount that, that other soul laners are bringing. Like, Erlong Shen is just dominating. And AMA is like, look at this. Everybody on my team moves 30% faster. And then just Robin's like, I'll immune all of your damage and then hit you for all of it back. And then Herc's like, I got a rock. Don't move out of its directional path. So, Divios loves it. Not even Divi really made it work. Uh, so I would I would stick away from the Hercules. Hu Yi. Hu Yi saw a major, major nerf. I mean, like, major nerf. Um, when he lost the buff on his two... They were like, oh, look it, but now you can see stealth things like all the time, rats. Uh, they reduced the duration of his two. They took off the pen from his two. They changed the way ricochet damage worked a little bit. Hu Yi went from being one of the strongest ADCs for a long time to just plain okay. Yeah, you can get away with him. He's an A tier. Sure, he's better than Cupid and Artemis, but, like, who ye and my team are AMC right now? I'm questioning it. I'm saying, I mean, do they have anything that's going to just kill AMC outright? Because if not, I'd rather have him on my team. He's going to be able to do objectives way better. Stuff like that. Um, but, yeah. He's still good. He's still totally playable. He's A tier. He's viable. It's just... He's taken a big fall, like a like one of the bigger falls. Probably him and Bologna took a huge smash this season from like pick them every game to like, eh, let's just pick Jingwei and Robin. 
Hunbat. We saw a fair amount of Hunmats play um, from both regions, actually, so far. Uh, most teams just trying to make compositions that are utilizing uh, his ultimate. Uh, he has enjoyed the Hydra's uh, buff, I guess you'll call it. Um, oh boy, mana. But like, I think it was like also like plus 10 physical power, which is actually the bigger deal. But he has been enjoying it. We're seeing a lot of players in the jungle pick up pick up Hydra's Lament before Jotun's Wrath just because of uh, what it provides price-wise plus passive-wise. And teams are just making sure to combo his ult properly. Use your ultimate, zone people out, get an objective. Use his ultimate, look for the immediate pick-off kill on the Guardian who doesn't have beats, whatever the situation may be. Being used quite effective. Isis. Isis had dropped off a lot this season. She's come back a little bit. A little bit. They reverted the change they made to her wing gust a couple patches ago. Um, Isis does full clear the wave at level 1. That's the big thing she has going for her is like Kukulkin. She has the ability to full clear at level 1. Now unlike Kukulkin, Isis can then immediately fight you because she'll have spirit ball. But very susceptible to ganks. Uh, very susceptible to a lot of things. Is she viable? Sure. Are you going to see her picked up? Probably not because the other mid gods are just better right now. She's in this situation where she's not bad, other gods are better. And that's what a lot of things come down to uh, for A tier in terms of if they're in A tier and they don't get picked, it's not that they're bad, it's that other gods are better. If they're B plus or below, it's pretty much that they're just not good for the most part. It's Tsunami. It Tsunami is okay. Um, her auto attack thing, while cool, like yeah, boomerang autos, is just the least effective thing to ever come to the ADC pool. Um, hey, you're an ADC. Let's make it so it's twice as hard to hit your auto because it doesn't do any more damage than a regular auto. We just made it harder to hit. Because that doesn't make any sense. Uh, I'm not sure what happened there. I'm not sure why her auto attacks don't do like 105% base damage or something. Like, hey, it hits for 75% on the way there and then 30% on the way back. So you do like 5% more damage. Like, that would be something. They just literally said, hey, your auto attacks suck. Which is weird for to do for a hunter. Um, her 1 is really strong, her 2 is good, her ulti is good, her dash is better now that they buffed it. Um, she has the capability to be good, she's just so much needlessly more complicated for not being that much more effective. Um, realistically, she's like in between A to B tier. Um, but I'd put her A tier. I'd much rather have an Itsunami on my team than an Artemis. Um, but probably around the same tier as like uh, the, the AMC and stuff. So yeah, A tier. Janice, hey! Let's get to some of our strong gods. So this guy... So this Janice character... This Janice character, you may have heard about him. You may have heard about him. He never gets nerfed. Now, I'm not sure what it is about Janice. I'm not sure whether casual QE is just impossible to play. Nobody can figure it out. I'm not sure whether it's Erez's favorite god of all time. I'm not sure whether... I'm not sure whether they've all fallen through the portals. And they just, they keep, they're just in a loop they just keep straight brrr, they're just in a portal from ceiling down they can't get out of the loop to nerf him um but janice is super strong janice has always been super strong uh since the dawn of time janice has been s tier he's never been below basically s tier since his creation and um yeah he's just incredibly strong but i guess the casuals just 
They can't figure him out, so he'll never get nerfed. He'll never get nerfed. What are you going to do? Speaking of characters that need nerfs, so Jing Wei. So I want to I wanna throw out something here about Jing Wei. Jing Wei has basically been the same character since release outside of quality of life changes, um, which were important. She was a bit buggy. Um, she had delays. She had like induction times on her dash and stupid stuff like that that definitely made her clunky. But the base of her, her skills have always been the same. Um, they just made everything a little bit faster because it was clunky and was weird, especially with ping issues and stuff. Ataraxia has always believed in Jing Wei. He said, as long as these things get cleared up, she'll be broken. And I'll let you know right now, that man was right. Jing Wei is one of the most popular picks and bands. I wouldn't be surprised if she had a 100% pick ban rate at the LAN. Um, she's so strong of an ADC that she's actually quite good in the mid lane. Um, one of the few characters that can actually play mid lane as a hunter. Uh, her and Soul, great at swapping. Either way, you get both of those on your team, congrats. You can run them in either role that you want. Very strong. When you've got Apollo Ultimate as your passive, you got, you got a damn good start to a kit. Not to mention he has a knockup on an ADC kit, the strongest form of CC in the game. Kali! So Kali is an interesting one. So Kali recently saw buffs. She recently saw buffs. So what happened to Kali, you say? Kali can now choose her target. She can now choose her target, but they did not mention that Kali's target now knows that she's Kali's target. So while Kali can pick her own target, you know if you're Kali's target now. There's an indicator. That's actually kind of a wash. So beforehand, you never knew if you were her target. Now you do. So that's actually a little bit more of a wash than you would think. A big thing for her now is that Kali's newest target will be the closest person to her. So in a team fight, you kill the ADC and the support's right by him at 20% health. Well, the support immediately becomes your target. You can kill them and keep proccing the heal over and over again, pentakill style. Items like Heartseeker got buffed. Items like Stone Cutting Sword got buffed. That does help her. But she's not busting out and being broken. But she is strong. Definitely viable. Could be played. Her early game is still very weak, though. She's in the balance stick. Hey, it's a Kepri. Hey, it's a Kepri. Hi, Kepri. How are you doing? Kepri's doing very okay. So Kepri, like, from release was like, I am Kepri. I am. And then, like, next patch, he was like, I'm still Kepri. And then the patch after that, he was like, feeling like I'm maybe just a Kep. And then he went to the next patch, and he was like, I'm feeling like I'm kelp. And then it was the next patch, and he was like, I don't know what you guys want from me. Um, Kepri's fine. Kepri's balanced. But he just he just kept getting nerfed and nerfed and nerfed and nerfed and nerfed. And now nobody really plays him anymore because there's better support guys than him. But he's still in an okay spot. He's got a good lane clear. He still has nice damage reduction for his team. But poor Kepri has like an identity crisis. He just kept getting nerfed. <laughs> Poor guy, man. Poor guy. Kukulkin! Kukulkin's all right. Um, mostly people like MLC playing Kepri, um, not getting too much uh, play from other people. I do expect to see a little bit of Kukulkin in group D actually. I would expect that. Um, but Kukulkin's kind of in a spot where while he's not bad, there's often other gods that are better. Uh, Kukulkin, right there in the middle, balanced here. Uh, not too shabby, not too shabby. Um, but he's not Janus. He's not uh, Raijin. Uh, maybe not even Ra, now that we've seen some crazy Ra play. Kumba, 
Garna. Kuma's fine. Kuma's not getting a lot of play right now. Um, the meta is a little bit shifted away from him, but he's still totally viable. He's very good against uh, attack speed heavy comps. I'm talking your comps that involve uh, multiple hunters, your comps that involve mage like hunters and hunters, um, your comps that involve something like a Mercury in the jungle, a Neja, uh, these characters that use any form of attack speed, uh, not strictly only ability damage, anything like that. Uh, and you help deal with them just because your mess also provides an attack speed reduction. Uh, that's basically what he is really good at, and that's kind of what you're looking to pick him into. Loki! Alright, Medusa. So Medusa is pretty decent right now. Um, she's fairly strong. She can turn Loki to stone right here, so he can never leave, and then bada bing, bada boom, we're good. Um, no, Loki's not actually D tier. But if you play Loki, you are D tier. That's all I'm saying. If you play Loki, you're a D tier person, a human being. Uh, but he's actually, he's not the worst. He's just not good. He'd be up there in the B plus region. I guess pick Loki before you pick Anubis. But like, can you not play Loki? Just don't do it, okay? Just don't do it. <laughs> All right, onward to Medusa. Medusa's pretty strong. If this was Xbox, you'd have Medusa up here. She like top pick. It's like Medusa's ulting on Xbox. They're like, I can't turn her ah, stone. But on a PC, you basically never hit her ultimate for the uh, for the stun. You hit it for the, the slow, amongst other things. But she's totally fine. She is viable, decent clear, good early pressure. Uh, translates late game to be a little bit more on the CC heavy side. Mercury. Mercury. He had a pretty, pretty small uh, area where he was like, hey, Mercury might be coming back into the meta. Look at this. Uh, Heartseeker got buffed, which is like cool for Mercury. But he... It's just other other junglers are just so, so, so right now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you've got all kinds of people that are viable in the jungle right now. You got Hunmat, you got Rachne, you got Erlong, you've got Thor down here somewhere. Yeah, even Suzano's pretty good. Even though he got nerfed, he's still all right. Um, but Mercury is okay. He is definitely viable. Um, but... You have to play him in a very specific fashion. Uh, if you go into a fight early, you're just going to die. You need to wait for everybody to initiate and then ult the end on Mercury after everything is said and done. Hey, it's Neath. Neath is actually good right now. Uh, Neath is quite good. Hello, Neath. How does this A plus tier suit you? Ultimate, still very strong. Uh, build wise, she can even build into Heartseeker. We're seeing some ADCs build into Heartseeker now. Uh, not too bad for her. Jing Wei, we've seen me picking up Heartseeker as well, just because of how strong that item is. Um, but on the whole, Neath has very strong early lane clear. Good damage presence, good ulties around the map to try to get your team ahead. Good ability to secure objectives with your backflip, spirit arrow combo, doing like seven, eight hundred damage fairly early. Overall, strong, can do a lot of work. Nemesis. Thank the Lord that Nemesis got nerfed. Because the whole Nemesis every game ulting my brains out as a support and I can't do anything about it, I just die was not fun not fun at all didn't enjoy myself didn't really enjoy smite um is she playable sure totally but she's no longer up here as your top junglers she's just a viable jungler for the most part there's lots of junglers that are like viable right now um but she's definitely fine Neja. 
So Neja is a interesting Neja is an interesting god right now, okay? So He's actually getting banned. He's actually getting banned a lot in Europe. Um, we saw multiple teams throw out the Neja ban. Not nearly as popular in NA. Not nearly as popular in NA. Um, a fairly risky god that has very high rewards. When we see somebody like adapting play Neja, you see why Neja gets banned um, because of those situations. But we haven't seen them be played that much, okay? We haven't seen them be played that much. I'm actually going to throw Neja into this A plus range. Strictly because of how much Europe is respecting Neja, and I understand where they're coming from. It's not as popular in NA, so I don't have as much experience with it. But I see where they're coming from in Europe and why they're afraid of it with the strategies that they use. And I do think that for specifically Europe, he is an A-plus tier, and there's a reason why he's very, very popular. Hey, Knox! Nox is viable. Woo! Woo! Oh, yeah. Yeah, buddy. Go Nox. Um, for the first time probably in a long time, you can actually play her and get away with it and do some stuff. Um, not as strong as some of the other mid laners, but you can totally play her. And you can totally do good work and not have your entire team yell at you. Uh, so congrats, Nox. You made it. You did it. You can be played. Nuwa. So Nuwa has pretty much always had the distinction of just being very safe. Very safe mid laner. Uh, you can clear from far back. You can send your mist down. You can send your minions down. Um, pretty good nerf damage. Nerf damage. Pretty good explosion damage. Uh... Uh, from her combo, her ultimate in the late game uh, can hit very, very hard, plus applies any effects that you need, such as things like Divine Ruin. She gets picked from time to time because of that capability, and she's fine. She's fine. And she is fine. Odin! Poor Odin, dude. Poor Odin. He is such a specific pick right now. Um, he kind of got wrecked when it was like, and he is an active that turns off Odin's ultimate. And it works for the entire team as long as one of you get it. And then Odin went, well, son of a bitch. I've only got three abilities now. And I just lost all my anti-healing. Feels bad, man. Um, your ultimate's up a lot faster than than Phantom is up, though. You can get away with him. But down here in this B-plus tier, he's going to be a very specific pick. If they pick a lot of healers, they pick a Guan Yu and a Ra, you can probably get away with picking an Odin. But you're going to have to understand that when you go into a fight, you have to ulti and then reset because they're going to pop the Phantom, and then you have to wait for the second fight before your ultimate's actually useful. Osiris. Osiris hasn't been getting played a ton, but when he's gotten played, it's been very effective. We've seen some very strong Osiris play um, coming out from people like, say, uh, Walrus, I think, was destroying on Osiris. Um, as far as his solo lane goes, his issue is that if you get behind on Osiris, He's one of the harder solo laners from behind because of his whole point is basically I walk at you and auto attack you over and over and over again compared to like AMA is like, hey, I stun you. I give my team buffs. I silence you. It's like even if you're behind on AMA, you can still do those things. 
Um, if you're behind an Osiris, you can't really provide the damage output that you're trying to do. But he is very strong, uh, and I expect to see him play in a land, and I'm putting him in A+. He's one of the premier solo laners, just a lot harder to get away with. Poseidon. Poseidon's not actually good. I don't know what happened to Poseidon. Maybe it's the fact that everybody gets a guess at the very start of the game. In fact, that's probably exactly what it is ever since this season. Um, but the whole, hey, I've got Aegis, grats, you can't do anything to me ever. Poseidon's big thing was he would kill you at level 5, he at level 5, he has Kraken, you don't have an active, boom, you're dead. That is no longer the case anymore because it's been an entire of Season 3 and he hasn't been in played for the entirety of Season 3. Now, how about a god who wasn't played at all? Until he was played a lot. And that is Ra. So Ra has gone... Ha, has done gone and become one of the more popular mid-picks right now in the game. Because of one guy. Because of one guy. And some say he is the best. But... An incredibly strong showing from Ra at LAN that made him a priority ban at the LAN. Um, seemingly out of nowhere. Uh, was just incredibly effective at LAN. Uh, very, very uh, strong in what he's doing. His healing is incredible. Teams utilizing his healing are very strong. And he's A plus tier right now. He's definitely one of your uh, mid laners that you're looking to grab uh, in those situations. While he is a little bit risky, he doesn't have the getaway skills. Passive 18% movement speed for 15 seconds should help you get away, considering that's a full boot. Ryzen, I don't think we have to talk about him for too long. Everybody understands why Ryzen's an A plus. That's one of those things we all can agree on, right? Like, oh yeah, it's Raijin. He's a very strong mid character. He clears the wave and he jumps on my head and he goes bongo, 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 bongo. Uh, Raijin's strong. No way around. Rum. Rum. Rum is one of your premier ADCs right now uh, in the world. Definitely uh, towards the top tier of Hunters. Uh, not getting picked before Jingwei Soul. Jingwei Soul either getting picked or banned and flying off the table just before Rom, but he's pretty much getting picked up right after those uh, two are off the table. He becomes uh, one of your main priorities. Ratatasker! Ratatasker! So, Rat... Obviously, very strong in the jungle. Uh, we've been seeing him get played in the solo lane. Divios being very successful on Ratatasker with the rotations coming from the ultimate. Uh, very strong early clear in the jungle because of how the acorn works. Um, definitely one of your stronger junglers in the game. Uh, but probably not on the same tier uh, when you think about getting wrecked by like a Quang. Robin. Robin is probably your premier solo laner. He's like the best solo laner they have to offer in terms of just generic, I'm a solo laner. Um, fairly lower cooldown, nine seconds. A slow prana assault, big damage. Has a root with decent damage that heals. Has an avoiding effect that does damage. Has an ultimate. That's a cap closure that does damage and reduces damage taken. Has a passive shield. If Robin is open for the solo lane, you're basically seeing every single solo laner going, sure, just give me Robin. Very low risk of actually dying in the lane. Very annoying once he gets his build online. He just walks at you if you're a backline character. You can't 1v1 him as, like, say, a uh, uh, ADC or a mage. 
And he's going to be in here as basically our top tier solo laner uh, just because of how incredibly safe uh, that, that he is as a solo laner. There's basically no matchup for him where you go, damn, I really don't want Robin. Also, you can get away with him in the jungle. Scylla. So Scylla was trash. Um, Scylla was trash competitively wise for a long time. Um, she did not have very much oomph at all. She could not simply get through the early game laning phase. She just wouldn't make it out of it. She would get too far behind and she'd end up too far down in levels and gold. And she just couldn't, couldn't get through it. Now though, with her new buffs, Scylla is much stronger uh, than she was. Still early game, she does get beaten. She does get beaten in the early game uh, by pretty much every character. Uh, but her mid game transition comes a little bit quicker and it's a little bit smoother on her power curve. Um, but she's just not still as safe as Janice. Provides different things. Scylla, of course, going for the burst damage, going for the uh, uh, immediate one shots. Janice, of course, looking for that consistent, unstable vortex style poke. But on the whole, you're going to be able to pick Janice as a lot safer pick consistently in the mid lane than you can Scylla. And that's why Janice is kind of your premier mid laner. Uh, comparatively. To keep in mind, Scylla is extremely hard countered by which got on this list? Do, 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 do. A Wheelix. A Wheelix absolutely decimates Scylla because Scylla can't ever use her dash because Scylla's dash does count. Even though she goes under the ground, it does count as an A Wheelix ultimate pull. So you get absolutely destroyed by A Wheelix. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Sir Cat. Sir Cat got a much needed bug fix that's been in the game since the creation of Sir Cat, which is that on Sir Cat you could ulti and nothing would happen, but it would take your cooldown. If somebody happened to jump at the right time, if somebody happened to just back at the right time. I mean, there was a lot of situations where this would happen. Sir Cat's ultimate would go on cooldown and do absolutely nothing. Is she effective right now? Sure, she has her situations. We're not seeing her play that much right now. She does do well in the healers. I expect to see a little bit more Sir Cat picked up um, with the new popularity of raw just because you ulti the raw make sure you get rid of that healing But on the whole She's in that a tier. She's not uh, a premier jungler right now. She's not quang. She's not Thor Scotty oh Scotty You are so broken and yet so bad at the same time. How can one god be so broken and so bad? um Scotty just gets ganked like AMC, right? She just gets ganked like AMC and she dies. Except for now AMC has the wards and the movement speed. She's probably one of the more extreme characters that like in casuals, I'm sure it's a nightmare. I mean like if you're playing against Scotty as a new player, I'm sure it's just an absolute nightmare going against her and just getting wolfed down to death. Um, but competitively... One rat rotation, you're dead, rat gets first blood, all of a sudden you're behind their ADC, you're done skis. One Thor ulti, you're done skis. One Terra ult, and they all form in on you, and you're done skis. Um, just does not have the capability. Very similar to Artemis right now. Uh, probably a little bit better than Art. Um, but she's just super high risk, high reward. You get ahead on a Scotty man. Congratulations, you just destroyed. You get behind on a Scotty man, congratulations, you are useless. Um, but she is playable, but not super, super in the competitive scene. Uh, she'll have a lot harder time 
in the competitive scene. But Scotty Mid in ranked. Just ask Timoni about how much ELO he gets off of that stupid god in ranked. Sobek. Sobek's good right now. Um, Sobek is an A plus right now. Not necessarily because he is a immediate thought process pick for support, but because he's simultaneously a good support and a good solo laner. Uh, we're seeing a lot of Divios play Guardians over on the solo lane. Sobek, a very popular pick. Um, Support-wise, we see a lot of Jigs playing uh, gods like Sobex, that kind of style. I think Sword just got the Sorbex skin, uh, kind of about that. So, uh, Sobek, definitely one of the more variable picks that you can do right now. Hey, look, a Sun Wukong. Sun Wukong's fine. Uh, Sun Wukong, for a lot of solo laners right now, is kind of the go-to, like, I don't know what to pick, so There's just no kind of give me some Wukong be. because There's Robin's already off the table and he's basically worse Robin. No uh, thank you for the sub, Guff, and I appreciate it. Um, as far as he goes, he's fine. Sun Wukong is viable. We've seen him played all season long, and it's basically in the second pick stage when the solo laner goes, okay, they have Robin and Osiris is banned. I don't want to play AMA this game because I don't want to win. And uh, I'm going to pick Wukong. Is basically how that entire situation uh, has gone down. Susano. Susano got <laughs> nerfed, as I think we're all familiar with. He took a little bit of a, a little bit of a fist to his butthole. Um, and it did hurt. It hurt. It was gaping. It was painful. Um, but he has since kind of, you know, stopped the bleeding, if you will. Um, and uh, he is still playable. I think a lot of people think that he is incredibly unplayable, uh, but he's not. He simply went so incredibly strong to just not broken um that people kind of i think overreacted that he is unplayable because of the fact that he got nerfed uh in the way that he did and he was so strong uh but i would not be surprised to see suzano still get spl play uh put him here in a tier will he get played to land yes he will um, you get a fully charged Susano ultimate. It's still very annoying. His pull can still be effective. He's still hard to catch. He's still very, very slippery. Um, is he nearly as much as a problem in casuals as he was? No. Will he be played at a competitive level? Yes, he's going to when some of the other characters are off the board. He definitely will. 100%. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Professor Vanus. Professor Vanus. So Sylvanas actually um, can see a little bit of play. He's not totally irrelevant right now. Um, and it's mainly because of how strong healing is right now. People are utilizing the healing to stay around objectives longer than their enemy can. Um, to force actives and then re-engage a fight. Stuff like that. Uh, he has a lot of counterplay in terms of what you can do. Weakening curses. Uh, characters like Sobek uh, can do very well against him. But he has very, very strong clear. One of the few characters in the game that can actually out clear a Terra. Mainly because of how strong his jungle clear is. He'll get to lane very, very fast. And he's an A tier. He's definitely a viable character if you'd pick. Hey, look it. We found our premier support. So, honest, honest to God, when Tara came out, I thought she was going to be bad. Okay? No lie. When she came out, I thought she was going to be bad. I played her 
in casuals, and I said to myself, this is the most boring character I have ever played in my entire life. I remember yelling at Scott Gandhi. I'm like, you're supposed to give me fun support. She's so boring to play in casuals. And then I played her in competitive. I played her in a scrim. And when I ultied, my teammates used their abilities with the cooldown. And they ran at people. And when I threw down my heal, we all grouped around it. And we healed up for all of our HP before an objective. And I said... Son of a gun. She's actually broken and in competitive. Um, as it turns out, in casual queues and even ranked queues, she was fairly ineffective because she's super reliant on uh, not doing damage. She just sets up your team, which is really not great for those queues because, like, that's the solo carry style. Uh, but competitive-wise, she has been the strongest support now for a very long time, even post-nerfs. And she's going to be up here in S tier as your premier uh, support character. Thanatos. Thanatos just saw a very unique to him uh, style of buff, which is that the first part isn't. The first part is that his silence has stopped scaling. It used to go from 0.5 of a silence on his uh, sight to 1.5. Now it is strictly one second at all time, which helps out his early game a little bit, as is Thanatos style to be early game, hurt his late game a little bit. But more importantly, Thanatos got a passive change, which is that instead of his abilities taking percentage total health, it takes percentage current health. Which is nice for him. It does make a difference. You'll see a difference while playing Thana. Does it make him competitively viable? No, it doesn't. It does not make him competitively viable. Um, could you snowball on Thanatos? Yeah, sure. Are you going to really, though, in a competitive setting? No, that's more of a casual pub stomper. But his in-the-air brethren, Thor, his in-the-air brethren, Thor, loves to be played. Uh, we still see Thors all the time. Uh, you've got yourself, your, your what is it, homie Fey, right, loves himself some Thor. You've got yourself, your adapting loves himself some Thor. Everybody loves themselves some Thor, except for Weaken. Uh, still one of your strongest junglers in the game. Not as strong as he used to be in terms of, like, he used to be the only jungle. Is is Thor open? Pick him every single game. Now it's like, well, is Thor open? Uh, Ratatask is open. Oh, Quang is open. Oh, maybe we want to run Erlong in the jungle. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, but he's up in this A-plus tier. He's still very, very safe as a jungler. Very, very strong. Very, very... Uh, consistent pick. There's basically no situation in which picking Thor is a bad decision. Provide CC, provide damage. Tyr. Tyr is not very good. Um, Tyr's annoying, right? Tyr's annoying. His two, uh, his cleave provides a lot of healing. Uh, as far as his viable roles, only solo lane. You're not going to see him in the jungle like you used to back in the day. But he doesn't bring uh, the, same, the same pages to the table. He doesn't walk at people like the way Robin does. Uh, he doesn't provide a bonus for your team the way that AMA does. He doesn't have rotations the way even, even that Ratatasker solo does. Uh, like we've seen broken out from Divi. He just walks over to the mid lane and then ults each to the gold fairy and kills you. Uh, we just haven't seen... Uh, really any effective performances from tier i mean we've seen like demi pull him out a couple times but like it's energy does it does it really matter what they play um and while he's been able to do stuff i honestly think that he's probably one of the the, the worst solo laners he has terrible early clear uh and he he's not very strong uh, down here in this b plus tier I, I really would not 
recommend playing tier. Uh, you can provide more to your team on uh, on that Sun Wukong. You could push them into A tier. You could push them into A tier. Um, he is kind of around that range. But like, is he better than Sun Wukong? He's different than Sun Wukong. You know what I'm saying? He's different than Sun Wukong, but like, he's he's in that range. Regardless, he's right there. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at look how cute that is. Look how cute that is. Look at him. Ul, 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 ul. Uller is not great either. Um, he's certainly not bad. It's just that other hunters are very strong. It's like Jing Wei blows up in your face and he kills you. And then Neath ults you across the map and just destroys your brains. And then you're like, okay. And then Rama snipes you in the air. And you're like, please send help. And, then, and her impales you. You're like, no. Um, but he's on that same tier as Apollo. Can you pick him? Sure you can. Should you? You're probably going to have either Soul, Freya, Rama, Blah, 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 open. You know what I'm saying? There's just so many people above him, which is why you don't see him almost at all. Vamana, on the other hand, Vamana is very strong, and we see him all the time. Vamana has been such a popular solo lane pick that we've quite often seen him picked as a first three pick. Uh, before the second ban phase to prevent anybody from banning so they couldn't get him. Uh, he's probably one of the most popular, like, uh, second round pick, pick, pick phases. Uh, right after the bans, the team that has the immediate pick after that uh, picks up Vamana very, very often. Uh, and I would say that he's probably just below Robin in terms of popularity. Uh, he's probably your second most popular solo laner right now possibly um him and ama may be competing uh for that slot but very popular over in the solo lane and very strong provides a lot of damage provides a lot right now uh builds work well for him uh his clear is very easy he can rotate early vamana dude vamana vamana no mana he's got the fastest movement speed in the game with chiron what are you gonna do vulcan so Vulcan gets played by, he's kind of like a more popular Kukulkan in the terms that he's not the most popular mid pick. He's certainly not a god that everybody's picking. Um, but some certain players in the mid lane are very comfortable with him. Uh, and they're bringing him out <coughs> much more... Uh, uh, often than some of the other players, but he's not universally being picked. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? Ryzen is universally being picked. I guarantee that Scylla will universally start getting picked. Um, Janice. Um, but Vulcan has his characters that like him, has his, char uh, has his players that don't, and that's why he's in this A tier. Can be played effectively. Doesn't necessarily uh, always fit into team comps. Um, stuff like that. Shibalanke. Guess who sucks, dude? So, the fall of Shibalanke is something that is great because he fell harder, or as hard as Apollo. Uh, Apollo and Shibalanke back in the day used to be the go-to gods. It was like, alright, we've got Allied on Shibalanke versus Barracuda on Apollo for the 20th match in a row. This is exciting. Um, but... Shibalanke just can't clear waves at all. Uh, his jungle clear is pretty mad as well. He has a hard time just doing the back harpies. Um, his ultimate is very underrated in terms of uh, competitive play. It's very detrimental when you can use that Shibalanke ultimate and then engage off of it when the enemy can't see. Very strong, but you'll never really get to that point. You'll be abused and killed over and over and over again. He's one of... Uh, the worst characters actually in the game, probably. He, he's towards that bottom tier. He could even be, he could even be just B tier. I mean, like, he is not very strong. He is not very strong. Jing Tian is 
kind of strange in that there's a lot of roles picking him up a little bit, a little bit. So we've seen him a little bit over in the solo lane, and we've seen him a little bit in the support role, an even smaller amount as of recently. We've seen him a little bit in the jungle. Um, <laughs> how viable is he? Seems to be fairly viable. Um, he's good into high auto attack compositions. Works well against teams that are utilizing that, that, that auto attack damage because of the four second 50% reduction on auto attack. Uh, on his one, of course, he has the knock up root combo. He has the double jump. His ultimate's fairly useless in terms of setup, but it can be used to burn actives. Um, but because of the fact that he can be played in multiple roles, it does give him a little bit more leeway, and that's why he's gonna be an A tier uh, compared to like a B plus, is because he has that leeway to be in multiple roles. Yamir is higher. So Yamir, uh, in my earlier tier list, was actually fairly, uh, probably fairly low. Maybe not, but I imagine he was probably about B plus tier. Uh, but Yamir is doing well, actually. Um, he's straying away from the support role a little bit and being played in other roles. Um, I think we saw, God, somebody played him at jung uh, in the jungle. Was it Sanguined Jungler who played Yamir like every single game when they pulled out the like triple tank raw heal meta? Um, he's been played in the solo lane a little bit. He's been played in the support a little bit. But they are definitely finding out uh, ways to make to make him work. And he's definitely in this A tier. He's in this A tier. He's working in places. Um, he has the opportunity to play in different scenarios. And being able to pick a god and not knowing exactly where he's going is also very, very crucial for the picking of Banfist. Wrapping up our tier list, we've got Zeus Juice. And Zonkoi. Neither of these gods have been very popular this year uh, for different reasons. Zeus's lack of mobility has slain him. Uh, this has been a fairly big mobility meta for the mid lane. Um, you're going to see gods like Janus, and you're going to see gods like Scylla, and you're going to see gods like Ryzen, uh, who have a lot of this mobility on them. Even guys that don't have. A lot of mobility raw actually do. They have bonus of 18% movement speed on his passive. Plus he brings other things to the table. Um, very, very common right now for the popular mid laners to be very mobile, very able to get away from ganks. Zeus, on the other hand, can't do that. He is not mobile. He doesn't get away from ganks. He does a lot of damage, but he's super, super susceptible to ganks. And he's actually uh, not very strong right now. Probably one of the... Uh, more bottom tier mid laners right now. Finally, Zong Kui. Zong Kui, <laughs> I think it was in the words of MLC Stealth. Zong Kui would be the best mid laner if you started the game at level 20. Um, Zong Kui just takes his early game now without Purple Pot is not good. Um, the ability of the enemy team at level 1 to get Shell meaning that your level five ultimate does almost no damage. Uh, it, it is so just bad for him. Uh, when you had to buy shell, at least it took time. You got a couple fights using your ulti before anything got off. You had to tear up your shell. Uh, not the case anymore. You just kind of get wrecked on Zong Kui. And as much as I love him, uh, you can't play him in the solo lane because Zong Kui you don't play mages in solo anymore. You can't play mages in solo because you lose the level one. You'll just get invaded and you'll lose your buffs and then you're behind. Uh, and he's basically in the same situation as Zeus. Where is going to be there in that B plus tier? Now, the only god not on this list, guys, is going to be Camazot. It's going to be Camazot. Um, still fairly new. Uh, not available uh, for competitive, obviously. Uh, I don't even think he's available in ranked yet. But as far as first impressions go, looking okay. 
Um, looking probably to be a more viable Thanatos. Um, I can only imagine in casual queues that he's kind of an issue. I imagine that his damage output is a problem for people. Uh, lower tiered. But he also has very skinny attacks. I imagine people miss his two a lot. Which would make him very bad if he missed your two. I mean, that's his entire kit. But as of right now, I'm leaning towards A tier for him. Um, still a little bit hard to tell. But I'm leaning towards this A tier for Kamazots right now. Probably could get played, but probably won't be played that uh, often if there is any of these top tier gods available. That's my tier list, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something here today. This is basically the tier list based off of um, my personal uh, play and knowledge and interactions with the pro community, uh, with SPL games, with scrims, uh, all of that good stuff, guys. Everybody in the A plus and above tier are going to be your characters that are basically on the banning table uh, slash you're, 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 you're getting picked fairly, fairly often game. A tier are all guys that you can throw into basically any composition and work out just fine. And once you get below that, you're getting either into very specific team comp situations or not viable at all. Thank you guys for coming out to the stream today. Thank you guys for all of the support. I hope to see everybody out tomorrow morning where we'll play some more of our God requests as always. And we'll head into our Friday stream day as we get closer to this weekend. And we have the SPL starting up tomorrow. Group D, guys. We'll be casting the Envy vs. Soar game, I believe, is the very first game. And we'll be casting uh, that set as well. So I hope to see everybody out here tomorrow as the SPL wraps up with Group D to find our two final teams from North America that are going to Super Regionals. Thank you guys for coming out. And as always, have a twitching day, y'all. It's the final countdown. Ba -da -ba -boo.